And welcome back to Trip to the Mound. Again, we are the iBaseball Channel podcast, Roy Giovanoni and Mike Lacoste. So, Mike, we're going to make a little shift in, the, in today's segment here. You know, we're, this is, again, this is a season where we have seen defensive shifts more than we ever have. There are two questions that get asked during this process. One, is the shift bad for baseball? And two, what does the shift say about hitters in general nowadays? It just uh, it really doesn't mean anything to me because what's going to happen is over a period of time at the major league level, it's going to get figured out and you're going to see more, which we already are seeing a lot of hitters now physically trying to go the other way with the ball and shoot for those holes because if you don't, you're a fool. I mean, you're going to have, and what it's going to do is this is just one of these uh, saber metric things where they've, one of these guys has come with these charts and said, "Look here at uh, six uh, or at uh, seven forty-five, you know, at nighttime on a Sunday, uh, this guy's got us here. Let's put them all over here, you know." And that, and of course, that it, you know, they may have this look to them, and it's going to be there uh, in in place until big league hitters start figuring it out and making them go back to the legit, uh, you know, setup. Yeah. I mean, again, this is nothing new. I mean, the, you know, one of the most notable shifts in baseball history was done on a career 340 hitter. And of course, I'm talking about Ted Williams. Okay. You know, this was a guy where you, that shift that you see nowadays, where the runner at the third baseman is playing just over second base. It was a and, McCovey shift. And a, yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of certain players, but it wasn't dramatic. They're putting these guys out in the middle of right field. Yeah, I, I mean, mean this it looks is, like a over the line game. Yeah, and, and again, so, the the pattern, the, same. the pattern of the hitter that you're seeing nowadays being that the shift applies to. I mean, again, the most common name that I think everybody thinks of is David Ortiz. Mm -hmm. You know, guys like that. You have power hitters that are predicated to just strictly pulling the ball, yeah. and you see these big, wide, gaping gaps on the other side of the field. And to me, I think the most interesting thing is, regardless of whose game I've been watching this year, anytime you see a hitter break the shift, yeah. you hear the announcer say, I love this kind of hit. I mean, it's like you want to see this balance kind of return back to the field. Well, let's fast forward the reel and take you to the World Series and your team's in the World Series and all of a sudden you're in the uh, a crucial game of the, or whatever it is, a playoff game to get into the playoffs and uh, you, you see your team uh, enacting this uh, dramatic shift on a player and that player comes up and whack, hits one right, slices one down the left field line and drives in three runs and you lose the game. Are you going <laughs> to go, well, that's just baseball and we played it by the, we had the, you know, look at this here. Well, not me. I don't want anything uh, unnatural to, to persuade me to make a big decision like that in a ball game. Yeah. Well, and again, taking it back to your day, how many guys did the shift get applied to? Well, it, uh, there weren't a lot of shifts. I, I, I'll tell you one thing that really bothers me, and it's a shift. It's guarding the lines on certain hitters in, in the late innings to protect the no double down the line. Uh, because I, the reason I don't like that is because uh, if you're a certain pitcher, uh, you have your book, you know, there's other books. You can look at the books, and you can see uh, – the hitters, how many hitters have actually pulled you down the line, right? And so if this is not a regular occurring thing, the, the guarding the line is the kiss of death for me. Because what you're telling me is, if I'm going to face a hitter that in my history hasn't really pulled me down the line with any authority, uh, if I've hung a breaking ball and gets pulled down the line, that's, uh, you know, that's my mistake. But basically, that's what you're telling me. You're telling me you want me to hang a, a pitch and make a bag pitch so that this hitter can r pull this thing right down the line so that our, that's where our guy is, right? That, to me, doesn't make sense. Well, and and I had a battle. I had an ongoing battle with this, especially the last part of my career, because at that point, now I was able to argue with a little authority because now I've got 10 years in the big league. You know, I know these hitters, and it was like, well, the book, and I said, well, no, go get your book, and we'll get my book, and we're going to figure this out because I, we're not playing your way, and we're not – I don't want Jeffrey Leonard back there two steps from the warning track when uh, Vince Coleman's hitting. He's not going to hit the ball over his head off of me. He's not. So why are we doing that? Just so he can continue to dump these little – I call them the little volley uh, love, you know, lob drops in there. Oh, well, we did what we are supposed to, but no, you're not – but the, the game is more refined than that. And I think the shift now, these, 
these dramatic shifts that we're seeing right now. They're, I'm sure they've worked, and I've seen some where guys have hit them and they fielded those balls <laughs> almost in normal uh, shallow right field, and they, they throw the guy out at first. That's okay, but in the long run, I think it's, somebody's going to get burnt big time because they're going to have that shift, and the guy's going to have it figured out. He's been working on it all week in the cage, and boom, he's going to, you know, it's going to get messed up. And I, I hope it happens to somebody, actually, Roy. I'm, I, I, don't like the, I don't like all these weird gimmicks that they, they throw out there. Well, and in, and in your opinion, do you think that it's gonna, you're going to see it a little bit less come the playoffs? Do you think, again, this is something that over the course of 162 games, it's a safe play. You can make it and get burned sometimes, and it's not as big of a deal. But again, we're talking about a seven-game series that means everything between pin it or no pin it, going to the World Series or not, do you think that you're going to see a little bit less of this shift stuff going on? I don't know. I, it, I, we, we have to wait and see who the pool of players are, if, those, if there's enough of those guys in there that these shifts have been uh, taking place on you know, during the season. So we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Well, and this also, wait until we get narrowed down to a few teams there before you put me on the spot, okay? Well, and this also brings up the question about the type of hitter that you just mentioned here. Because, again, when you look at some of the hitters – and again, people have tried to, using statistics and things like that, brought up studies to say these guys are, you, you shift a little less against them. Again, prime example, Ichiro Suzuki, there's been zero shifts against him this year because this is a guy that can technically hit the ball anywhere. You continue to go down the list and you look at guys like Yasiel Puig, Joe Maurer, Yadier Molina, Ryan Braun, Buster Posey, David Wright. These are the types of guys that they consider that you cannot really build the shift up against. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about guys that, again, are solid contact hitters to all fields. I mean, it's, you're talking about a, a more balanced type of hitter. If you have that player on your team uh, and somebody that's just going to have that patented type of swing where they're going to try to pull everything, then I guess then you're going to have to live and die with it, you know. But for me, if I'm a manager or a hitting coach and we're, you know, we're getting down to the last five or six weeks of the season and uh, we, it looks like we might be playing a team that's going to enact one of these big major shifts, then I'm going to probably go to that hitter and say, hey, man, you know, I think you ought to go – now's a good time to start, you know, thinking about well, if we play these guys, you know, they're going to give you 90 feet over there to try to hit a baseball through, and we could sure use your hit instead of you. Any kind of a hit is better than nothing, making it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bunt. Yeah. I guarantee you. We're, we're the, again, the shortstop is playing, you know, nowhere no, near. No, third baseman is over Yeah, third, third baseman's second. over second. Yeah. Shortstop is the guy that's covering that side of the you field. You just can't let that happen at the big league level. To yeah. me, that's a mockery of uh, of – Something that's like, you know, of course, from their end, they're going to say, you know, we're going to do this until you prove you can hit the ball. We don't think you can hit the ball the other way. And that's what you I know? find fascinating, again, because when you, we talked about Ted Williams, this is a guy who had the shift on him, and he still hit 340 for his career. Like, he still and, – and Ty Cobb was even a guy who openly – kind of chastised Williams for saying, you're dumb for just still being a pull hitter. Mm -hmm. But he was a guy that could pull it off. But what we're also seeing is we're seeing a lot of guys where the shift is on them and they're just hitting right into it. You mm -hmm. see those guys hitting the base hit to right field where all of a sudden the guy at second base catches it and throws them out at first. So you're not seeing that type of adaptation from the hitters. You know, guys aren't hitting 300 against the shift. If anything, you see a dramatic drop in the batting average. Yeah, I think um... – a lot of the shifting and bunching that used to occur was mostly in the outfield. You'll see guys cheating one way or the other in the infield, but in the outfield is where you saw a lot of it where you'd have whole shifts over, give them the right field line. You'd have bunching and giving them both lines and so forth and so on. A little bit of that, but not like they're doing now. Yeah. It doesn't even look like a baseball defense out <laughs> there. It's like over the line. Yeah, and to go back to something that you brought up uh, just a few moments back, too, from a pitcher standpoint, again, you have a shift. Let's say you're batting against a left-handed hitter. You've got the whole infield stacked on the right side. Me? I'm batting? No, I'm sorry. You're pitching. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. So I, I, had that, that? He, I had that a little backwards. He gave me the bat. <laughs> swing a little bat today. No. I, I wait for those opportunities. If you make that mistake, I'm grabbing that bat, and I'm going up there, and now I'm hitting. I like to hit. So again, I'm you're sorry. okay. Sorry about that. that but was again, your fault, anyway. yes, yes, it was. But again, you're pitching against a left-handed hitter. Okay. That's, and you've got the entire infield shifted to the right minus the shortstop. Does that change how you, as a pitcher, handle is supposed to handle <laughs> the at bat as well? I mean, aren't Come you? Come on, Roy. You know me a little better than that. But you say I'm not even going to do that. Me personally, I'm not going to buy into that. 
Because again, you're telling me that, uh, oh, well, think about it. I'm a sinker ball guy, a guy that runs the baseball away from a left-hander. That's the kind of guy that they'll, they tell you, hey, go the other way with him, right? So in order for me to try to get the, the left-handed hitter to pull the ball on the ground, I've got, to, I've, I've got to show him something hard or maybe harder than he's used to seeing and then throw him something a little bit softer to get him to roll over it, or I've got to throw him a, a change-up or a breaking ball coming in or away to him and down, and hopefully he rolls over that. Because if I, make, if I get anything up at all, he's gonna, if he's a good hitter, he's going to slice that ball or inside out it to left field. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, come on. And so I'm, I guess, I'm not even going to do it. Yeah. So I guess I wouldn't be able to pitch in today's era. Maybe I, I don't know if I'd be able to pitch. And that's the point that I, I was know. trying to make is that to a degree, isn't it taking part of the pitcher's arsenal away from him when you're telling him that you have to, I mean, you want your pitcher to pitch into the shift. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Or what you want on the ground, right? Yeah. You don't want it hit in the air. And if it's hit in the air into that shift, it's probably going out of the ballpark. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. So yeah, I, I don't like, I, I, I it's just something that's going to come and go and pass in time. You watch. Yeah. Because too many hitting coaches are going to get smart because they're going to start taking the heat. You see the next year that GM or somebody or somebody's going to say, Hey, how come this guy can't hit that ball over there to, to, you know, there's 90 feet open over there. Can't you teach this guy? <laughs> We're paying this guy $10 million a year. You teach him or he better learn to hit the other way or, or one of you is are, are gone. Somebody's, maybe somebody's going to say that. I don't know. So eventually I think this is going to wear off. Yeah. Bit, because I don't think it's going to fly with some of these guys. And you think about it. Put yourself in the hitter's shoes, okay? If you go up there and you see this gigantic opening versus – just seeing it sort of a, a patented defensive setup. The patented defensive setup means that we're not playing you to pull or we're not playing the other way. We're just, you really don't know what we're thinking, right? You don't know how we're pitching you, right? So consequently, you, what you do is you work out a game plan with your defenders to adjust as the pitch count goes one way or the other. And that's why I used to have little signs with certain guys on my defense where I could Hey, I'm going to, you know, get ready because the ground ball is coming your way. Or can I, can I leave this up? You know, is that ball going to go over your head and go out of the ballpark? Or, or is, the wind blowing, is the wind blowing in out there? No problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of other things, a lot smarter things you can do. It's, a, it's these saber metrics, guys, with the charts and all this stuff. And I'm, I'm, we want them out of there. It's going to run its course. Yeah.